What's going to happen here tonight at the Melrose Ballroom in my ass? Welcome back, everybody, to Total Nonstop Impact, Impact Talk for Impact fans, featured right here on the Impact Lounge. This is Trent, along with my co-host today, J-Bone. J-Bone, say hello to the people. What's up, man? It's good to be back. And you are back. You are officially part of the family here. And then we got Kyle in the production booth. Kyle, say hello. Well, because we are janky, uh, you guys can hear the sound bites and the audio clips, Trent and J-Bone, but you can't hear my voice through this microphone. So I can say whatever I want. You can't do nothing. Go fuck yourselves, Trent and J-Bone. Yeah, there he is, right from fuck the production you. booth. All right, so we got fuck Kyle you. in the production booth. He's fuck doing, you too, J-Bone. So we're doing a thing here where Kyle is in the booth, and he's he's on his own. He's, he, he, he's We're letting him go rogue, J-Bone. He's going to throw in clips. He's going to throw in bites. Man, he's going to be Kyle. Is, the is, Kyle are, we all know and love. Are we going to be okay, man? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, You're I'm, all going to die. You give Kyle uh, control, and we're in trouble. So I don't know what, what to expect. Basically, we're going we're gonna, to we're, we're gonna be um, we're gonna be hoodwinked over here, man. I don't know what to expect. I really don't. But the uh, the listeners are in for the real treat here because, as you guys know, uh, Kyle, is, uh, Kyle is always up to something. And next week, I have been told, that next week, J Bone, the Taya Valkyrie parody song will be completed. That's oh, what he's I saying. Can't, I can't wait to hear that. You know, it went over really well last week. I mean, Taya herself reacted to it. She was on vacation in Thailand, and she responded, "Going, oh my god, what she, is this?" <laughs> she popped for it. That's uh, that, that's that's pretty awesome. That's uh, you know, she didn't uh, she didn't blast it. She uh, she gave it some love, from what I saw, and yeah, that's. That's amazing. So, what more can we ask thank, for, right, Javon? Thank you, Taya. That's yeah, much love. Awesome, much love. Thanks, champ. We appreciate that. Actually, let's uh, Kyle, you know, Kyle, if you're uh, you're not running too rogue in the booth, why don't you remind people of that song that we played last week that that put uh that Taya put over? Go ahead and throw that in there. There we go. And that was what, what a party, man. What a party. Anyway, J-Bone, we are here, man, to talk about the June. I, What's man, I, I remember when that song was popular, like when that original song oh, first yeah. came out. And I actually uh, I, pl- I played that for my son because he, he knows a lot of stuff. He's like 13, but he knows a lot of like pop songs and stuff. Right. And I'm like, you're not going to believe what my new crew is doing with an old pop song. <laughs> and I told him about it, and he was just laughing. <laughs> <laughs> See, we're over with the kids. The kids love us. And I love those, those kids, kids love right us. back, Trent. No, listen, that, that, song has been, that song was 21 years ago, J-Bone. You, you believe that? 21 years. That is, can't believe that. Man, what, is, what, what is he doing now? Who knows? Jeez. I got no idea. I got no idea what Ricky Martin's doing right now. But I got to find out. Yeah, let's look that up. But in the meantime, we're here, Jay, want to talk about the June 21st, 2019 edition of Impact Wrestling, live from the Melrose Ballroom in Queens, New York, back at Melrose. Uh, Kyle's in the crowd on this one as well. So uh, he's live. I mean, he's he's on site. That's what we do, Jay, Bone. I was in Philly. Kyle's in New York, man. We were we were on site for these tapings. So yeah, we just need Impact to come to the Midwest, like Chi-Town or Milwaukee and... Uh... You know, we could complete the uh, trifecta there. Come on, Impact, let's get this done. I, I feel, I feel, if you keep mentioning it every week, somebody's gonna hear because we know they're listening. I know they're listening. Somebody, Josh Matthews, God damn it, I know you're listening. Wishful thinking. Anybody, I somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I know he is. Uh, but yeah, let's let's make that happen, guys. But we kicked off J Bone, big uh, big opener, intergender. We went with Tessa Blanchard taking on Jake Chris. Impact Wrestling by the Balls. Uh, we got announced today, as we record this, it was announced officially for Slammiversary. By the Balls. Sammy Callahan and Tessa Blanchard. So this was obviously a tease leading into that, but they made it official today. That's going to be Sammy and, and Tessa at, at Slammiversary. So this was kind of a tease. She, she's kind of chopping her way through OVE. 
So uh, thoughts on this one, Jay Bone? And this was uh, intergender. I and mean, what are your thoughts on intergender in, in general? What do you think? If it's if it's booked right with the right people, I think it can be a lot of fun, you know. Um, and it, it, what's funny is, and I don't want to stir off the topic too much, but uh, Chris Van Vliet just had a really great interview with Eli Drake, and um, it, it it just puts a little little bit of perspective on his point of view because. I think a lot of fans just assume a lot of shit and they troll the hell out of them and they don't understand where he came from when all mm-hmm. this stuff happened several months ago with him and the intergender stuff. And if you listen to the interview, whether you like him or not, you at least hear his point of view on it. And that's one thing that we haven't heard yet. So I want to invite everyone who is an Eli Drake fan and gosh knows I am. Uh, you know, I, 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 I stole that shtick for my podcast, you know, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, if it's done right, it's, it, it could be a, a really fun, great match. If, if, if you're going to stick like, you know, it's, it's some, you know, 400 pound dude against a hundred pound chick that ain't fun. The, the, you know, impact wrestling is going out of their way to make believable matches in my opinion jay christ is her size they're both tremendous workers in the ring and they had a great match absolutely you know and one of the notes i had to honor jay Bone was that that they're more evenly matched up size wise it, it actually adds more com- competitiveness to the to the match right it like it makes it a little more a little more fun to watch i mean i if i'm watching eli drake eli's jacked he not is, to, you know, he's jacked. I mean, he, I, I think he's got Tessa, at least a hundred. I think he's got at least a hundred pounds on Tessa. And Tessa's pretty jacked, but and she's, you know, jacked she's still, yeah. she, she's still small in stature, but yeah, right. That's but yeah, why. I mean, yeah. You get a, you got a guy with a, with a chest, the size of a runway, you know, you can land an airplane on it. I mean, come on. Am I really going to think that there's a competitive, uh, you know, am I leaving, leaving my, uh, um, yeah. What's the word I'm looking for here? The uh, suspension of disbelief. You know, on the fact that he can be pinned, but yeah, Jake, it's it's yeah. You, you get you try to make the match believe. I mean, we all know that it's a work, but it's they try to make it a believable work, you know, to make it entertaining. It's it's, it's still the it's, illusion of competition. That's what you yes, gotta do. It's it's the magic of professional wrestling. Yeah, right. But this match was good because Jay here. I, one of the notes I wrote down was, I swear to God, Jake Christ. Is does not get enough credit for how good he is with everybody he works with. The guy can work with anybody. Oh, just, that takes that credit. The Christ brothers in general. I want to see them shine again the way they did when they first came in two years ago, because right. they busted their ass for like a year in the company and then they brought in Sammy, or whatever the time frame was. But they were in the company by themselves for a while. And and for a while, I think they were just about the only uh, tag team on the roster, along with LAX, you know. And 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 that was when the company was regrowing, oh, but yeah. the content was still solid. You know, it was probably the smallest roster they ever had, but they were. Yeah. It was a building phase. They had the the new what they call the new regime. You know, they were part of that too. The yeah, Chris they really are a very a big part of that. So. No, I think Jake, unfortunately, will never get enough credit for how good he actually is, man. He is a, a very talented guy, and he's very, very flexible in terms of being able to work with anybody. But this was great. I mean, Tessa beat Jake out in this one. She um, she hit the magnum off the top. Trojan right. man. It was, a cool, um, it was a cool finish. I mean, it, it was just it was a good flowing match. It wasn't boring. I liked it. Yeah, and, it, was, it was good back and forth. It wasn't one-sided at all. And it wasn't too long, right? It was like it was like a perfect perfect amount of time to tell a quick story, and then you got right to uh, Sammy coming out with Fulton and Dave Christ, and yeah, Tessa staring down Sammy from the ramp, basically you know a little, little stare down, just kind of building that little feud going up. Oh yeah, and, she like I yeah. said uh, uh, last week with you, you know, she held out her hand and did the rock bring it. You know? Oh yeah, <laughs> that was pretty cool. That was pretty that cool. That was that was Let, badass. Now, real quick, J Bone. The match announcement being on Twitter like that, what do you think about it? You think a little unceremonious to have it announced this way, or is that pretty much the nature of it now? Modern social media, Trent. Get out of the 90s. No, you know what? They're using 
their social media to get attention to, you know, the big event that's less than two weeks away. And there's impact wrestling. Social media has been growing nonstop and oh, steady great. over the last couple of years. Their social and, media is nuts. Yeah. And they're, and they're using it great. You know, they're not, they're not spamming the crap out of stuff. They're using it good. They're, they're reminding people, you know, they show little uh, highlights and stuff. And and one thing they even showed uh, right before uh, we started doing this, uh, a little preview to Friday's show, a little clip of uh, Eddie Edwards. Did you see that clip, dude? Oh, my God. What is that clip? Right, we're going to get to the Eddie thing in a second. I want to get to because we, we, the opening match went right into the next one. So let's, let's talk about that in just one second. Yes. We went right away into Eddie Edwards taking on Madman Fulton. It was a pretty standard match. Until the big shift in this match, J Bone. This was probably oh, God. Oh, one of the most sadistic things I've ever seen on television, ever, on, on wrestling television. Uh, they're having the match. Eddie goes and grabs Kenny, and right around then, Killer Cross appears on the screen, and he's got a guy with a bag over his head, which is a Sandman, and he's he's basically intimidating Eddie. And he begins to waterboard the Sandman on live TV. Now, uh, now uh, Kyle, go ahead and play that clip. I want to hear that. Remind everybody of what Cross said. So let's hear that real quick. Mr. Edwards. What Good thing? evening. I hope you're not busy. I just wanted to touch base. This right here. This is Mr. Sandman. <laughs> Shut up. It's got Sandman. Your latest mentor. I'm just trying to touch base with you and let you know with a moment of your time. Unintended that everything, all these problems we've been having, shut up! It's all water under the bridge. You know what I mean? I know this looks uncomfortable. Hey! He's having a good time. He has everything he could ever want. All the carcinogens and alcohol he could possibly consume. Right? What do you mean you're thirsty? <laughs> this guy. It's a lot of work. You want something to drink? Mm. Oh, I, I got that for you. Stand by mm. one second. Hey, Eddie, you're going to love this. Mm. Mm. What do you say, Eddie? Can you make it to the party? Mm. Oh, 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 what, 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 you don't like that? What is this? You don't like that? Cross is waterboarding Sandman. 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 Cross is waterboarding Sandman. 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 What's wrong with this guy? Eddie! Come on, Eddie! He's scared of the to the party. We're having a good time. He's going to drink it all before you get here. And there you go. That was pretty crazy. Pretty, pretty crazy. Oh, that was just insane. It just him, him screaming at the camera oh and, and waterboarding, you know, Sandman at the same time, you know, and then, you know, uh, sadistic Eddie Edwards is just distracted, which causes him to lose the match in the next five seconds. But, but man, this, this whole new, well, I shouldn't say do, but it's it's still an evolution of this thing between Eddie Edwards and Killer Cross. It's just escalating. Oh, my God. And then that clip, what they showed online today. You want to set that up real quick, uh, Jay Boy? You want to talk about what we saw there? It is Eddie in the church, but the the verbiage that goes, uh, the, the visual that goes along with it is what's, okay, here we go. Says this Friday, the confession that no one saw coming. And, and they show Eddie like in the pews and he's like praying to the altar or something. He's, he's, in, he's in a church. He's on his knees. He's praying. And someone comes up behind him and puts a hand on him. Now, at this point, he's in a church. You you give your, you know, if you're a man of faith, you, you, you pour out your, your heart and soul to... Uh, a, a minister, a pastor, a priest, you know, if you're Catholic um, and just, you know, talk about what's going on in your life and whatnot. But uh, I, I can't, <laughs> I'm a little, uh, <laughs> I'm a little curious to find out who this uh, <laughs> person behind him is and also what the confession is, because th that could set up a whole can of worms. Oh yeah. It, it, what I'm thinking is the future of, Killer Cross on Impact Wrestling. I, I hate to say that, uh, but I, if he's, how should I say it? <laughs> I don't know. 
if, if, if he's confessing to the murder of Killer Cross, <laughs> they actually, I just, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm oh, like, shit. I'm like, that's that that's the be all end all of of this compilation. This, oh my god, I, I, I personally think it's Cross's hand. I think it's Cross because he, because he was down there. And he's like, he asked Eddie to, to for more, and he's like, no, you know, do it or whatever. And like he's encouraged Eddie, and then online he was playing it up more. So I, I think it's cross. I don't know, man. We'll see. I, let, we'll, yeah, why not jump ahead too much? I just know it was insane. But yeah, he, just that that boot that he oh. gave to cross off camera, and the <laughs> the boot, the audible boom. Yeah. Oh yeah. Was like, oh, 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 it was oh, nuts. damn. <laughs> well, big win for Madman Fulton. I mean, that's a huge win for him. I mean, despite that it being with interference, I mean, it's a little shadowed for sure, but um, hey, it's a good win for him. But then Eddie runs to the back. Alicia's there trying to warn him that she, he's being set up, but he's not listening to her. So, uh, you know, we're going to continue that segment throughout the night. But I mean, listen, good for Fulton. OV is on a nice little tear right now, even though Jake lost to Tessa. It was a good, it was a good profile feud. OV's got a little momentum right now, which I like. OV needs more momentum, I think. Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely, man. We go from that, J Bone Moose taking on Tommy Dreamer in my ass, and this is uh, part of Moose's conquest to just rid uh, impact of the ECW guys. So in my ass, uh, the Tommy, it's, Tommy's weird. I mean, Tommy's one, one of the most lovable people in wrestling. He is right, and but you know his performances can can fluctuate, but. I feel when when he's got the right opponent, Tommy can belt it out. And I thought this was one of them. He really, he was very generous to Moose on this one. He gave a lot, and Moose looked like a million bucks. I think Moose looked great here, taking out an old legend. Uh, it was it was good for both, but definitely Moose kept him strong going into that match with RVD. So, uh, hits the spear to take the win. What are your thoughts on this? Do you think they should be pulling out more ECW guys? I think I think it wouldn't be bad for the next three weeks or two weeks, whatever it may be at this point, to have a couple more ECW guys that he takes out. What do you think? Um, It, it kind of depends on who it is. I mean, if it's who they've been featuring, like if we get Sabu or... Um, I mean, we don't have to have a ton of them. You know, it doesn't have to be like one every week, I don't think. I think him putting the exclamation point... From from uh from last week messing with Rob Van Dam throwing out the challenge beating Tommy this week, we'll see where this week plays out. But I don't think Moose honestly has to do too much other than cut a few promos. You know, okay. I mean, he can maybe take out someone backstage. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But um, I feel like Moose is a, a strong enough heel. He he doesn't have to do. Like a, a million hits, you know. True, he you know Moose has become more of a character as of late, right? Like he's he's uh he's playing up the the robes and the look and the and the the pimped out image and the money. Money Moose is the guy. Like he's he's the guy now. So he's such a good heel, oh, and he's, he's I mean he, the evolution of him ever since his uh, headlining thing in my ass uh, with Aries last was year. it was it Slammiversary? The last year's anniversary, he was the oh, main. Man. I mean, in a year where Moose has come in a year is mind blowing to me. It like, is. It unreal. is. He's been really good. Yeah, because he lost that, and then there was a little question for about a month on where things were going to go with him, and how he played that up on social media was tremendous. You know, and oh, then yeah. t- he t- and then it was uh, what he attacked Eddie. Is that what it was? Mm-hmm. And, Eddie seems and started be, that whole thing. Eddie seems to be the guy who uh, who's getting a lot of <laughs> everybody targets poor Eddie over here. Poor Eddie. I mean, first Sammy Callahan breaks his face, <laughs> Moose and Killer Cross. I mean, it, it doesn't end. It doesn't end with Eddie Edwards. Poor guy. But no, you're right. Moose losing in the main last year, I felt was the best thing that ever happened to him. Best thing. The guy. The guy. The guy went into a direction which he could never have. I think had he been face champion, I think the loss was the best thing for him. Yeah. And I think, I think it made, I mean, including myself, it made a lot of people scratch their head. Like, Oh, oh yeah. Man, it, it's, it seemed like he was really getting a decent momentum. He had a couple championships under, under his belt, or at least one from what I remember. And, uh, um, grand championship. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. And, you know, it just, it just seemed like, oh, okay, well, they gave him that for a while. And I don't remember who had it next, or maybe Aries or something. I forget. Um, it was, Tim, I'm sorry, but to me, it was kind of a forgettable championship. Um, oh, well, yeah, we, we can all the, agree on that. The, like the, the belt itself, you know, not knocking anybody who held it, but, um, but yeah, Moose, Moose turning heel then, it, it was shocking. Because oh, when yeah. he was a baby face, it was like, yay, okay, there's Moose. And there wasn't a whole lot to him. Right. He's got so much more charisma now as a heel. It's crazy. I'd, I'd like to ask the loungers, uh, what do you guys think? Was Moose, did you like Moose better as a face or Money Moose the heel? And what and, and what were your thoughts when he lost last year? Because me, I know there's a lot. There was a lot of bad vibe. Everybody was like, "Ah, oh, that's bullshit. He should have won. What the hell?" Blah blah blah. But man, I mean, talk about long term thinking and booking. This dude made the best out of it. I mean, they wrote him perfectly. He he became uh, the whole Mister Impact Wrestling. I love it. I think it's Mister Impact Wrestling taking on Mister ECW or Mister Monday Night. You know, which is fantastic. I think it's such a good passing of the torch feud. I just feel. Moose needs the big win on RVD, though. You have to have him go over at that point. But yeah, uh, I, you know, I, I feel the same way. Yeah, RVD makes a save on this one. Moose was uh, Moose was uh, looking to send a message to RVD, and just by continuing to beat down Dreamer, but RVD came in and and made the save. So Moose was about to go for one of the coast to coast. Uh, Frank or the uh, <laughs> was it the um, yeah, not the coast, Frankensteiner coast to coast. What did, what did Rob call it? The uh, Van Terminator. Van Terminator. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was his first. I'm not giving it to Shane McMahon, God damn it. That was that was Rob Van Dam's first. Yeah, right. I'll never forget when he debuted it. He, it was his comeback match after his injury in ECW. And I forgot. I think it was against Scotty Anton, who was uh, Scotty Riggs in WCW. And they had that, oh, whole, wow. they had that whole storyline. And he, deb- he said, I'm going to debut the Van Terminator. Because <laughs> he had the Van Daminator. And he said, I'm going to debut the Van Terminator. And uh, man, he debuted it on, on Scotty Anton, and man, it, it was nuts. <laughs> that, that was insane. But um, cool, man. Listen, so we go from that, J Bone, to uh, Ty is in the back. Our very own Ty Valkyrie, our, she's our knockouts loca. champion. Man. man, she's total nonstop impact knockouts champion. I kind of feel like, uh, yeah, I, exactly. Yeah. I mean, she's 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 all of our 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 champions. <laughs> she's she's near and dear. But uh, she's in the back with Rosemary making a deal and uh, basically saying if, if she loca. helps, if Rosemary helps her take out Havoc and Sue Young, she'll give her a shot at the belt. Now, uh, Kyle, really quick, play that segment with uh, Taya and Rosemary in the back. Put that on, please. I want to remind people what they, the deal. I don't think this is it. We should probably go. No, no, no. This is absolutely it. Come on. Like, look at it. It's like dark and gloomy and humid and there's like rats and gross things and dirty and it stinks. Like this is absolutely where Rosemary lives. Oh, hi, hi. You know, we don't recall putting a welcome mat out on the stoop and yet every single mortal and their little dog just makes themselves at home. Stoop, I don't know if I would call that a stoop. It's more like a weird dark entrance to like a bat cave or something. Anyways, you know I wouldn't come down here unless I absolutely had to. It's humid, that's bad for my hair. The lighting is terrible for my complexion. <laughs> it does wash you out a bit, dear. <laughs> but, I've got a little problem with your little goblin friends and I think you need to deal with it. We need to deal with it. Valkyrie, what happened to you? You used to be a thunder goddess. Now you're coming groveling to us to take care of your little pest problem. Well, in Slamtown, when there's a pest problem, you call an exterminator. I don't know how to deal with these creatures or whatever they are. So, but even in your world, this exterminator comes at a price, yes? (laughs) You know how this works, Taya. Give a little, get a little. Layoff. Obviously, you're just like everybody else who wants an opportunity at my knockouts title. So, let's make a little deal. You help me exterminate these little flea goblins, 
and I'll give you a chance at me <laughs> and the title. Intriguing. We'll have to see what the cards say. Cards? Like, I don't speak demon. Right, your language. We'll have our people call your people. Be gone. Whatever. Back to you, Trent. So there you go. So they made that deal. Basically, it was going to be... Uh, it didn't seem like Rosemary played into it, though. I didn't think Rosemary was uh, feeling that. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, Jay Bowen, we went into the match. It was Taya taking on Sue Young with James Mitchell and Havoc. Now, right there, Jay Bowen, give me your thoughts on that faction. Sue Young, Jess Havoc, Jim Mitchell. What a cool faction this turned into. What do you think? I, I love the fact... Well, number one, just having Jessica Havoc back is right there is tremendous yes. now you you put her under the umbrella of the uh the the sinister minister <laughs> oh man what a guy and um the and 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 him always calling her his kaiju queen is just oh it's, <laughs> it's just gold oh man it's you know, he's he's building her up. Anybody else saying that, people would go, whoa. You know, because she is, you know, she is a voluptuous woman, you know. What but, is but, kaiju, though? I don't even know what kaiju means. Can you tell ka- me what that means? Kaiju is like kind of like Godzilla. Okay, because there's a, there's a indie promotion called Kaiju Big Battle. Yeah, and, and right? it's like kind of like a kind of like 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 uh, it's it's like an oriental monster. I think is what okay. kaiju is. It's just a just a real general. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, All right. no, I know what you're talking about. The promotion that's <laughs> they, they do some goofy shit. They're oh, they fun. got yeah, they got like a big marshmallow <laughs> fighting people and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like they're nuts. Well, yeah, if you, <laughs> you, you hear about kaiju, uh, like like monsters, it's like you know Godzilla or all the beasts, you know, in his universe are, are kaiju's. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. Or, or like the oh, what the hell was that sci-fi movie that came out? There was a couple of them back to back. It was the machines versus the monsters. Um, oh, I cannot nice. remember what the hell that no one. I love that one. Hmm. A lot All of right. fun. The, yeah, the dude from uh, Sons of Anarchy is in the first one. Uh, the, which guy? The blonde, the blonde kid, the main kid. Oh, Jax? Well, I want big songs matter. Yeah, yeah uh, he's in the first one. I can't think of the name of the movie. Now uh, someone will come up with it in the comments. Yeah, somebody leave a message. Leave, leave us a note. Here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the loungers are great for the info, man. They remember stuff. Yeah. They they remember stuff and they throw it in here for us and, and we get it all down and we, we remind ourselves what it was. But yeah, though anything you if you can't remember anything, J Bone, just throw it out to the loungers. They'll throw it in they'll throw it in the comments. No I, doubt. I do that to my own viewers of uh, Smash This Podcast, man, and they they come back tenfold all the time, always helping me because you know uh, you know little, little uh, you know the big A sets in once in a while with old J Bone, you know. The, prof- <laughs> the professor isn't always on his game. Yeah, no worry, yeah, <laughs> gets the gets the best of us, man. But uh, well, yeah, let's let's, go, let's move on. So the match ends in DQ. You know, Havoc gets involved. And um, she's there. So does so Sue is not happy about it, but Jim Mitchell attacks, uh, tells him to keep attacking Ty. So they're beating down Ty, or about to at least. Rosemary makes her way. Oh, the, and, the look on Sue's face was priceless. Oh, though, when, when after okay. she just looked at, she just looked at Havoc like, "What did you do?" <laughs> <laughs> she's good, man. She is good. Oh, oh man, so good. But uh, no, she jumps up. Rosemary comes out, and Jim Mitchell gets on the mic. And Kyle, go ahead and play that clip. I want to remind people what Jim Mitchell says here. Let's throw that in. So he gets he's on the mic. So Jim Mitchell on the mic is is gold. Let's put that out there. You know, be like he's gold. Oh my god, <laughs> he's fantastic. And all, <laughs> anything he does, he's great. But let's go ahead and play that Kyle real quick. Wow. If it isn't Rosemary, right on cue, ready to save the day once more. Oh, Rosemary, just cool your jets. We're not here to incite violence. In fact, Rosemary, this is a time 
of celebration. In fact, on July 7th in Dallas, Texas, Impact Wrestling will be celebrating Slammiversary. Now, the state of Texas is well known for its wild parties. So, we are going to up the ante this time. In Dallas, Texas, on July 7th, all four of you women, all four of you are cordially invited to a cotillion of my own. A very prestigious ball. It is, in fact, the Monsters Ball. Wow. So there you go. So Jim Mitchell's on there, and he announces so that Taya is going to defend her knockouts championship against Sue, against Jess Havoc, and Rosemary in a Monsters Ball match at Slammiversary. Women's Monsters Ball. This is huge. That huge. that is that is now I had I had some comments from my guys on on uh the show that we did last week and uh there was a, a couple different comments you know letting me know like when uh there were other um you know, oh, monsters balls with the ladies and stuff like there that. There was one more. I know that there was one for sure before. Yeah, uh, Hakeem Fullerton said, "I think the first female monsters ball was a sacrifice, two thousand nine, between Taylor Wilde and Daphne." That makes and, sense. And and someone, I thought someone said one other one. I'm quick looking here through my comments. Can, can uh, I just while you're I'm looking not through seeing I, it? I got to give a shout out to Hakeem Fullerton, man. This guy, I mean, we got some great listeners, but Hakeem, man, you, you with the with the info and the analysis, I love it. I look forward to Hakeem's stuff. I mean, oh, a lot of you guys are great, but man, I yes. just just because you mentioned Hakeem, I got to I got to just give him a shout, man. He is uh, he's fantastic. You know, he yeah, is. Uh, Blood Rain here it says Jade and Rosemary had the first Blood females. Monsters Ball in 2017. So, uh, you know, obviously one of them was first. I'm not sure the classification of of both of them, but uh, I'll have to go into the old Impact Plus and go watch those. There you go. But uh, but there we go. So there's at least one or two in the history, but uh, I think this will be the first Fatal 4-Way. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And you got two from the same camp, which makes it even more interesting. Very interesting. Story is built on this one. <clears throat> But we mentioned Hakeem, so let's go. I'm going to kick it over to Kyle. Kyle is going to do the YouTube comments from last week. We're going to do some of our interaction. As you guys know, you leave your YouTube comments on the show, and we read them. We reply to everything. As you guys know, we reply to everything. J-Bone, start jumping in there, too, on the Impact Lounge channel on the video. People are shouting you out. Hop in there from your Smash This Podcast account and uh, throw some replies. People are talking to you, too, on there. So definitely, guys, Can't get wait, J-Bone man. in there. Yeah, we'll the do. interaction is great. We get we got hundreds of comments a week. Like I said, Kyle, I jump in on my personal. Kyle jumps in on from the uh, the total nonstop impact account, and then J Bone just start getting on there too. So there it's great. Oh, the conversation's great, J Bone. These guys they engage so well. But uh, let's it cut really, oh, it really is a good audience. Really oh, is. you guys are fantastic. <clears throat> we love you. They listen. By the way, J Bone, the numbers from last week are in one of our most listened to shows. Uh, from the iTunes, Stitcher, and all that stuff, all those feeds, and uh, you know, combined with YouTube, SoundCloud, all that stuff, one of our most listened to shows. And it was it was a, a, a double episode. It was a bonus. It was a two hour long episode. It was. <laughs> People wanted it, man. People wanted. It. But let's go ahead and kick it to Kyle. Kyle, go ahead and take it away with the comments. Get some good response. I know there was one guy Kyle was looking to really put it, put down on on tape. So go ahead, Kyle. Take it away. And we'll be we'll catch up with you guys on the other side of this after Kyle's done all the comments. What's up, loungers? Kyle Man here with your comments. Uh, I apologize to everybody that I've taken a back seat this week. Uh, a lot less Kyle Man here on the show. I got a wisdom tooth out yesterday. Quite frankly, my mouth hurts like hell. I feel like I just took a super kick to the face plus a chair shot. Not fun, so I'll be back full-time next week, and you'll get to hear my La Living La Huera Loca parody song. I worked very hard on it, putting the finishing uh, touches on there. Uh, 
all that and more next week on the show. But enough about me. Let's hear from you, the loungers. Let's uh, read a couple comments, shall we? Wrestle Nation writes, when you hear the sound bites in the intro, you know Kyle is back. Damn right, damn right. Mir Neesom writes, welcome back, Kyle, a.k.a. Scumbag. Chris Steele Show writes, Legend has it, the two people on the Pursuit logo are searching for a new TV deal. Ha ha ha, sorry, I had to. Funny one there. Critical Sting writes, Carl immediately thinks about llamas with hats. A little Jimmy Neutron reference there, Carl Weezer. Jamie Wisner writes, I would love to hear a Ty Valkyrie Total Nonstop Impact intro. Hey, let's make it happen. Tweet her and tell her you want it, you know? We can't make that happen. That's up to you guys, loungers. Hakeem Fullerton writes, I would love to hear that parody Ty Valkyrie song. Hey, it's on the way, pal. It's on the way. What else we got here? Oh, lots of great comments. You guys never, never disappoint. So many. Jamie also writes, J-Bone and Kyle joining Trent on the podcast. Awesome. That's right. We are a threesome here from here on out. Eric Dayhoff, our good friend Eric Dayhoff, writes, another great review. Welcome back to everybody's favorite scumbag. If the Impact Lounge gets tired to do an interview, I'd like Kyle and Trent to do the interview with her. It will be a highly entertaining interview. That's for sure. Make it happen. Let her know. Tweet her. Tell her you want it. Hakeem Fullerton writes, it's sad that Scarlet Bordeaux is no longer with Impact Wrestling. It's true. I mean, I'm going to miss the smoke show, but I mean, if she's going to, you know, hold the company hostage in the middle of her deal to get more money, I mean, let her go. Let her go be happy doing something else, whatever. Well, if I were her, you know, I would have waited till the deal was up and renegotiate at the end. But I don't know. Holding hostage in the middle of it, demanding more money. And I, well, I, I mean, who knows? We, we only know one side of the story. Maguedro writes, Scum Instructor, welcome to FAC back. Hey, good to be back, Maguedro. See, I can roll that a little bit. Card Nation 420 writes, Elgin should definitely beat Cage. I really like Cage, but I have serious worries about his body holding up. He does a ton of high impact news, news, a ton of tight, what the fuck? A ton of high impact moves for his size and has been wrestling with so much tape all over his body over the past year. Plus, Elgin has been kicking ass so far, so why not? Jamie Wisner writes, Kyle, if no one is sitting in those seats, then no, that is not a scumbag move. <laughs> if you listen this week, last week, you'll know what she's talking about. Sorry, folks, I, my mouth is all fucked up from the wisdom surgery yesterday. I'm a little funky here. A little funky off the painkillers as well. Don't mind. We all love painkillers, don't we? Whoopsie writes, Kyle, I live for passable wrestling merch where people don't even know what it really is. Okay, that's a reference to last week. I had on my OVE hat in the Stop and Shop supermarket, and uh, an employee stopped to tell me how much he liked my hat, wanted to know where it was from, but he had no idea it was wrestling merch. Daniel Bishop writes, I love the Rocky Four shirt Santana had on. Bill Mack, Bill Mack with a... Uh, Bill Mack wrote a lot, a whole lot. Uh, we appreciate you, Bill Mack, but I can't go through your whole essay. But I appreciate that you took the time to write all that. that that's what this show is all about. We love you for that. Thank you. Doctrine of Mayhem writes, really, really good episode, guys. Keep this format and keep J-Bone on here. Triple threat reviews from here on out, baby. I agree. Totally agree. Whoopsie writes, I feel like Impact is really weak on merch. Yes, I have seen improvements, but they can be doing so much more to promote the merch. Oh, I'm not ready yet, Trent, you motherfucker. The interruptions. I, I got the phone going off. I got, I got Trent bothering me here, trying to push it along. Uh, Trent, we're, we're going to read a couple more. There's nothing you can do about it. Eric Dayhoff writes, I hate that Ricky Martin song at the beginning of the review. I always hated that song. Every time I hear it, it makes me want the vomit emoji. Come on, Eric. It, it was funny. I, you don't have to love the, the actual Ricky Martin song to appreciate our Ty Valkyrie living in our way, our local parody version of it. Just wait till you hear what I cooked up next week. I think I could change your mind on that. This guy writes, Notice how Fala wears black sumo gear now, dot, dot, dot. Hmm. Fala in all black. Uh, I mean, we see some five o'clock shadow, a little beard coming in. I, we're going for a full heel turn. Huh? Nothing wrong with that. I'm with that. Like I've said on the show plenty, I've seen Fala in PWS and more of a heel persona. And I'd like to see him bring that right here to Impact Wrestling. Christopher Rayburn writes, I love me, I fucking, not not I love, I fucking love me some J-Bone and Monk Fruit Sweetener. More of a Stevia guy myself, Stevia, however you pronounce it. Uh, never tried Monk Fruit, I'll give that one a try next time. I uh, try to artificially sweeten up my coffee. 
see what else we got here. So much, so much love from the loungers. Hmm. Whoopsie also writes, yes, people laughed when you said that you asked for this. Yes, all right, so if you guys didn't hear last week, I was saying how uh, there was just some, you know, loud, uh, you know, know-it-all smocks in the crowd at the Queen's tapings, and uh, I got into it with them just a little bit, because I get annoyed at that shit. Whoopsie also writes, not for nothing, I hate the smarts that come to the show to hijack the show when they clearly don't watch Impact. People were getting a this is awesome chant during the Jordan versus Madison match, and the, there were these guys chanting, no it isn't. That kind of stuff gets under my skin. I'm with you, Whoopsie. There's one thing I hate, is when people show up at a wrestling show and attempt stand-up comedy out loud. It's very annoying. Very, very annoying. I stay home and do that. Uh, I mean, a ticket sale is a ticket sale, so I'm not going to tell you to stay home, but just, you know, go try stand-up comedy on your own time. You know, you don't have to do that at the wrestling show. Uh, you're a funny guy. Believe it. Totally believe it. Just, there's a time and place for that. Chris Steele writes to us, well, the Chris Steele show, not just Chris Steele, the Chris Steele show writes to us, I want them on Viceland. That channel is amazing. By the way, I could watch it all day. With Viceland, I believe Impact could produce true mature content. I'm talking TVMA mature. People say Impact is like the new ECW, and what kept ECW different from WWF and WCW was that they were extreme. So I think the best way to be different is to be the most edgy slash mature company on TV. They could even push this on Twitch. Now I'm sure it would help in securing a TV deal. You know, I- I'm with you, Chris. You know, don't don't be afraid to be edgy. I know we live in that sensitive climate these days. You know, everything's so politically correct. But I mean, Impact isn't on you know a crazy big network, and they, it's not like they have like uh, like WWF has like action figure deals with Mattel and uh, like all these investors. So they really can't push the envelope so far. But Impact can, and they should. Uh, take advantage of that, but they have been, I mean, I, the show is very edgy, I mean, we got Sandman getting waterboarded this week, I mean, come on, it is, it is fantastic, along with, uh, I'm not going to spoil that, uh, Trent J. Bone will get to that later in the review, but uh, what else we got here, uh, Doctrine of Mayhem writes, Madison Rain versus Jordan Grace was match of the night for sure, agreed, and I see a bright future for Kira in the near future. Now that some more blonde dead weight is gone, there's more room for real talent. Okay, all right, I see you there. A little scarlet shot there. That's so much here, so much. Now, that's about it. We'll wrap it up here for now. That, that's plenty. Uh, let's go. Let's get back here with the review. Trent J Bone, back to you, motherfuckers. And we are back, J Bone. Nice amount of comments from people, man. That was uh. Hell yeah, man. A- Interactive week. Kyle, keep calm down there. I know you're. I know you're worked up, Kyle. Just get, get calm down. Calm down. God damn it. You know, just relax, Kyle. <laughs> Jim, let's get a little, little little dusty bone in here too. What would Dusty Rhodes say to Kyle to calm down? Because he's hot off those comments. He's he's fired up. What would Dusty Bone say? He would say, Kyle, let me tell you something. You needed to settle down. Get you some sweet tea. Go lay in the sun for a while. Go bask. <laughs> Go burn it off, brother. You'll be all right. And then you got Sandy Callen coming here with the complete opposite, going just, just relax, because I'm, I got, I got to focus on Tyga, and I got no time, no time. I got to be in Ohio. I got to be, I got, I got to run everything around here. I got no time for Kyle with bullshit. So there you go, guys. A little, little, little cameo by Dusty Bones and uh, Dusty, Dusty Bones and uh, Sammy Callahan. Quote unquote. <laughs> I try to keep a straight face. I can't. <laughs> the thing is, now I now I'm gonna see Sammy in a couple of days at AAW. Now he's usually pretty busy on show days. I'm I gotta get a show bumper from Sammy, but me and Sammy doing it together. That's the key. Oh yeah. Like yeah. like You're I not started to tell who's who. I started like you know, and Sammy <laughs> comes in some I got an idea for it. We'll see. I gotta eventually get Sammy on it. We'll see what happens. But uh, all right, so we are. So we got the comments there. Like we left off with uh, the Monsters Ball announced the four, the four way. Then we go from there. J Bone, Ace Austin's in the ring, cutting the promos. Some some of the longest mic time he's had, I believe. I think it's the only mic time he's had, if I'm not mistaken. 
Yeah, it's, that's something new for Ace Austin. It was uh, refreshing to hear. I, I think yeah. he's had a little in MLW. I, I'm trying to remember. He's He's been on there, too, though. Okay. So. But Kyle, go ahead and play Ace Austin's uh, little intro here. Hey, Wait thank to his, his, his I mean, promo. Thank you. Really, really. It's too much. It's too much. The ovation. The ovation. My T-shirts are right over there. They're also on ShopImpact.com. <laughs> <laughs> that is the kind of welcome that someone like me deserves. Someone who, just in case you didn't know, is the only person on Impact Wrestling that is yet to be pinned. It's true. Undefeated, unbeaten, unlike anything you have ever seen before. The one true ace, Ace Austin. And ever since I got here, my name has been synonymous. Go ahead, look that up real quick. Synonymous with one word, future. They call me the future of the X Division. But my ability is so far beyond that of just the X Division. I am so much more than the future of just the X Division. I am transcending this division, and soon all of Impact Wrestling will be the Ace Division. A cocky little bastard, isn't he? He really is. And it starts with taking the X Division Championship. I dare someone to come out here and stop me. Referee, get in here. Bit of an open challenge. From Ace Austin. No, he's undefeated. Why not? Wants some competition. Yeah, but how do you prepare for an opponent you don't know who it is? He doesn't care. He's an arrogant little bastard. And there you go. So as you see, Ace Austin is calling out for an open challenge. He said he's never been pinned, J Bone. He's the only guy that's ever been pinned. An arrogant little uh, bastard. Undefeated. Now this. Now let me say this. I want to preface this, J Bone. <laughs> arrogant little bastard. Historically, in Impact, you this is usually a setup for a return, but the return or debut, I should say. But the the debut slash return usually always gets the win on the guy who's already there, which I am never like you can't do it every time. And the problem is they do it every time. That's my yeah. view. And it's like it becomes predictable. It's like, well, if we don't know who the guy is, he's gonna win. That's the thing that hurts sometimes. And you know, they've I mean they've changed world titles on that, which I don't see them doing anymore, but they've changed the belt on things like a, like a surprise debut. So you know, we got to be a little careful on those things. Yeah. But, as you know, TJP makes his return to Impact Wrestling and, and to take the open challenge. Now he's TJP. He's seasoned. He's WWE run. Did he have the, did he have the Cruiserweight title there, J-Bone? He was the first. He, first. Was, the, he was the inaugural because he won the, uh, the Cruiserweight, the first Cruiserweight Classic. Yeah. Okay. And I believe as Suicide or Manic, he was the x champion. So probably the only, probably, oh, actually, no, Rich Swan is, Rich Swan also had the Cruiserweight belt over there, too, I think. So these two guys have held both titles. But I got to say this now. Um, I did like, J-Bone, that Josh Matthews, meant, he, he referred to it. I mean, he made mention to how, that, how um, he was manic, that TJP was manic before. So they they didn't they didn't shy away from the history. From oh, you know what? I, I actually missed that. I didn't, I didn't hear that. Oh, Kyle, that's, that's that in interesting. Real quick. Yeah, Kyle, clip that in from Josh Matthews real quick. TJ Perkins, one time known as Manic in Impact Wrestling. He's back. Yeah, see, there you go. So Josh mentions that. He mentions the history. And you know, I thought that was cool like because they did a thing where, where he unmasked at one point. You know, He was like, I am TJ Perkins and all that during the Impact run. But I like that they didn't just act like that never happened. I mean, that's oh, cool. See, I, I don't remember that he. I know he was manic or suicide or whatever for a while. I don't remember that he was unmasked. He was unmasked. Oh wow! They did, like a, they did a little mini documentary on him. Th- that yeah. must have been. That must have been during one of the times that I wasn't watching as thoroughly. Yeah, I believe it was Destination America, and he talked about you know uh, Filipino heritage, and then he talked about being poor and homeless, and. He was signing his first contract. I believe they showed Dixie giving him his contract, and he's signing it. It was actually a cool. If you can find that on YouTube, uh, if anybody, else, any of the loungers, you guys know where that that is online on YouTube. 
uh, throw throw a link to that. Uh, I'm sure it's on Impact's channel, J Bone. But guys, throw a link oh, on, sure. on. Yeah, throw a comment to us. Um, I'd like to show that to J Bone because it was cool at the time. It was really different, which I which I enjoyed. But uh, so some of the notes I had here, J Bone. Let me get your thoughts on this. I thought it was um, Ace was not getting as much of a response, which kind of bummed me out. I was like, I wanted Ace to get a but you know, he, it's his first time talking, and he's still kind of finding his voice a little bit. But the thing that bothered me was the TJP win. So I got to say that that was a note I had in here. I think uh, I know they're in a tough place, right? Where we, what do you do? You debut the guy and he loses. But at the same time, do you think it matters? Like, would it have, would it have been bad if the Ace Austin, who's been there, beat the WWE guy? You know, like you tell me. It's uh, yeah. I mean, there's it's kind of a fine line of yeah. Uh, it's a tough I, line. I, th- I think I'm, I mean I'm okay with TJP coming back and giving a win because Ace Austin, with the exception of this match, is undefeated. Now that doesn't mean that you take away all those wins. He's still a top guy in the X division, and he's going to get his shot. I'm guessing sooner rather than later. Yeah. So. You know, and and TJP is not assigned talent to Impact Wrestling. I want to make that very clear. I think a lot of people assume that oh, he's back, so he's just part of the X Division now. No, he's this this was a this was a one time thing, as far as I know. Oh, I mean, okay. he might he he might have something else in this set of tapings in New York before Slammiversary. But he is not signed. He said that in a recent interview. So, um, I mean, he's and he's he's keeping his options open, you know. And he's you know he was with WWE for quite a while between uh, NXT the or not NXT. Well, and maybe he wasn't NXT for a little bit, but um, but being part of the cruiserweight thing and then two hundred five live for a few years and um, I mean you know and that that brand has its had its ups and downs. And uh, still struggles to this day, but uh, you know he he can still say he has that under his belt. You can't take that away from him, whether you like what he did in WWE or not. It's it's still a positive in his career, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. okay, fair enough. But see that that see that now it gets me more. If he wasn't, if he's not signed, why do we give him the win over one of our one of our rising stars? You know why? It would to me. It's like, hey, come on in. You're, you're, you're going to job to one of our house guys, our, our home guys here. This is this is our future. We're, you're going to give him the big win. I thought that would have been pretty cool. But it also op- keeps the door open for, hey, we're going to give you the win, but we'd also like you to come back and finish this down the road. Keep, Please keep that in mind. We'd like you to, you know, consider that. There's Potentially that the pay-per-view, maybe. Maybe they, it's one of the one of the early matches on Slamversary, perhaps. You know how many times they like to kick off the show with a hot X division championship, or not necessarily championship match, but just a just an X division match to get the house all you know fired up. And that's oh for sure, that's never a bad thing. So yeah, we'll see. For sure, I agree. It could, it could very well go that route. So yeah, we'll see. I'm not I'm not uh, not saying no. You might get that added to Slamiversary. I, I'd be okay with it. Yeah. Totally okay with it. So um, for so TJP with the win. So we're in the back after that, J Bone. Conan's in with the at the Rascal's treehouse, and he's telling them that they disrespected LAX by walking into the clubhouse, and that that started some trouble. So Conan says uh, he warns them if they don't change their ways, their L- their match with LAX is going to be a, a massacre at Slammiversary. So we have that match. The tag titles are on the line. Slammiversary, huge deal for the Rascals. Um, my question on that is, is it a Freebird rule? And all th- they're kind of targeting all three Rascals here, so. Is it a Freebird rule for the for the tag belts? They haven't said anything yet. What do you say? Uh yeah, I don't know if there's going to be a stipulation added. I mean, I, there certainly are plenty of options. You know, yeah. it's 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 one of their bigger shows of the year. You know, yes. one of the top but two, three, whatever they have. I think um, it's becoming the biggest one. To be honest, I think it's 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 bypassing. It's bypassing uh, Bound for Glory, in my opinion. I think Slammiversary is becoming the big one. 
Yeah, yeah, and it's I, I've hear I hear people all the time say, "Oh, this one's bigger." No, that one's bigger. Well, I mean, you know, you're you're both right in your own opinion. I don't think anybody's wrong, right? But yeah, it's it's uh it it certainly is up there. Um, gosh, you know, I I think it's gonna be Zach and Dez, but um, I I I certainly think that a, a free bird rule could come into play if and when they do become champs, and then you see uh. You see Trey in the mix too. That I think that'd be refreshing. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. I'm curious where how they play that up, but uh, we'll see where that goes with the with the Rascals. But kick it over to that. From now, Eddie Edwards is getting close on Cross's trail, and uh, he <laughs> finds out. He finds he gets to a closet, sees the guy in, uh, under the mask and the under the hood and tied up. Pulls it off. It's not. It's not Sandman, Khan, and. Uh, so he finds out Cross never abducted Sandman. He looks confused. Cross comes out, attacks him in the hallway. They're brawling. Let's just try stopping Eddie. The typical, I don't know why women are always trying stopping fights. j I tweeted this out. Why are women always trying to stop a fight? Let them fight. I think because Alicia's <laughs> been down this road with him like so many times trying to get the old Eddie back. It, it, and, and it all started with the feud with Sammy. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, year and a half ago, whatever year ago, whatever it was, um, you know, and it's been, it's been, a, it's been a, a tough love war with her to try to keep the, and I, you know, usually when you say, you know, put the reins on them is usually a, a really bad term to use as far as a marriage relationship. But in this case, it's, she's trying to save her marriage. She's trying to save what little bit of sanity is left in her husband yes and um yeah it's 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 tough for her i think after this last stuff that uh eddie had with his last what was the last feud right before cross i'm trying to remember he's been through so many um, oh yeah they've kept eddie pretty busy um before was it before cross it was holy crap i can't remember oh man uh <laughs> Loungers, help us out here, man. I, I'm, just, I I'm trying remember. to remember. I know, I know, Moose was a part of it at one point too. Maybe it was the um, Moose one. Maybe it was the Moose feud. Maybe it was. No, no, no. He was with Eli. He was doing oh, the tag team with Eli. Drake, and, and then they had, and then they had the feud, right? Yeah. yeah. And it was, and that led to Drake's exit. Yes. Um, so I think at that point, Alicia kind of felt like she was finally getting her husband back because that was, that was just like a normal, that wasn't like an insane bloodbath of a feud from what I remember. No. So, you know, she probably was like, Oh, okay. Eli has gone. This is good. I think I got Eddie back now. I think we can kind of come back to like a, a norm, you know, but now then, you know, cross comes in the picture and well, nope. <laughs> Sorry, no. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't happening. <laughs> no, ma'am. But no, let's see. Let's see where this goes because, you know, Eddie's, they're fighting. Eddie gets an advantage, and he's about to just take Cross totally out. Uh, let you try stopping him, and Cross just says more. He says no, more. And they imply Eddie goes down and <laughs> bites him, kills him, because he gets up with a with a mouthful of blood, <laughs> just psychotic. Oh, just between the death metal music playing in the background, which I was like, I was listening to your latest uh, EP with your band, Hemi trying to like figure out if like that was one of the songs that they were playing, <laughs> but they were playing some like, you know, like screamo death metal music in the background. And I was like, Oh my God. So between that killer cross on the ground, screaming because God knows what Eddie's doing to him, like biting his face off and then like chewing it, chewing on something when he came up and, and the, 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 the screaming that killer cross is doing while laying on the ground. So just the, the guttural, it was just, it was, it, it was some of the most disturbing stuff I've ever, I mean, I don't get me wrong. I loved it, but it was some of the most disturbing you know, two minutes that we've ever seen on Impact Wrestling. And then Alicia's slowly backing away like, um, okay, I'm done. Like, you're this, done. This, <laughs> yeah, 
Um, I'm, I, I can't help you no more. Um, I'm walking away from this literally and physically. Yes. And, and he turns around after his face is full of blood and he's hyperventilating and he gives one last like stomp, curb stomp, death blow, whatever, kick to cross to end the segment. And I'm just like, oh my God. So yeah, that's the big question going into next week is, is cross done? Did he kill cross? What is he confessing? Uh, impact fans are like, what the hell? <laughs> it's got people talking at least. It's got us all wondering, man. So we'll see where they go with it. We'll see where they go with it. I'm I'm very very curious. But this is probably turned into the most compelling story uh, on on wrestling TV. I, I'm like, what the hell? And I so, love I love the way Cross like responds to shit on social media. He just responds with like crazy kooky gifts. It's, it's awesome. usually it's the Joker. <laughs> yeah, something that fits his personality. And and right after I saw this promo that we were talking about, the one where he's in the church and the confessing and everything that's going to go on, that we're going to find out what's, you know, to come of this on Friday. Mm -hmm. I I said, oh, my God, is Eddie confessing to killing Killer Cross? And I tagged Killer Cross in it. He responded with, like, a vampire coming out of a coffin. I'm like, what? (laughs) 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 What? What? What the hell is that, killer? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's good. That's good. We'll see, man. I'm excited though. I'm excited to see where this ends up. Oh hell yeah! I mean, All right. it, when when I one last yeah. interesting note on this: when Impact Wrestling replayed that segment on Twitter after it aired on TV, uh huh. Killer Cross responded with the classic, uh like Bugs Bunny ending to all those cartoons, that's that's all, folks. <laughs> the, you know, oh, the Mary, wow. the Mary, the Mary metal, you know, melodies, melodies, whatever. Yeah. And it says, that's all, folks. And that, that was the gif he put. And I was like, and that also threw up a crap ton of questions. Like, oh, like that's all for him and the company or this, you know, what does that mean? So, yeah, this... Yeah, <laughs> if, if fans want to know what the future is, especially with all the controversial talk that's been going on lately, time will tell, man. Time will tell on this one. We'll all right, it. all right, Jay. When we get uh, right before the main event, this is where Sammy challenged Tessa on the OVE cam. So that's as we know, that's been accepted now. So that's uh, so that's on for anniversary. But now here we are, main event time. We got uh, the X Division champion Rich Swan taking on Johnny Impact. Taking on Michael Elgin, non-title three-way match. Uh, what a crazy good match, j Like, talk about a display of talent. Yeah, what? ton of action. Um, yeah, and, and, and this this one was. Um, I'm trying to remember all the uh, the matches that we already covered, but yeah this this was a this was a damn good one. I don't remember if I said that this was uh, considering like like match of the night. I don't. I can't remember. Oh no doubt. I I just think I think Rich Swan is so damn good. It's incredible. The guy is super super good. And uh, man, I would talk about a dynamic um, display in this match. He did fantastic. I think he did fantastic. But great. It was a great match. I mean, Swan gets the win at the end, and um, you know, I mean, it's a big win for him. Retains. Obviously, the, it was non title, but he keeps you know, like Swan stays strong. The other two are pretty, pretty established already. But I think Swan needs, uh, you know, more and more. I thought it worked out great for him. But, yeah. You, and you got to give him a win in all this because he's had a lot of trouble with Impact and Elgin. So it was nice to let him get a win in here because you still, I mean, he's the champ in this. So, I mean, you know, the, the number one contendership of those two guys, Impact and Elgin, that's not going away. So if you give the win to Elgin, then, you know, you got to keep your champ strong as well. So there's yes. there's that. So. Yeah, absolutely. No, it went good, man. It was it was a very – it was a very every, – everybody stayed strong. Despite loss, I think everybody stayed strong, which is, which is what you want. But – um you know, the the three of them all got their beef. They're all fighting back and forth. So it was nice. Little Johnny with Elgin, uh, 
just kind of what they're bickering. Just, I mean, it's, it's what you want. You want to just keep the story, keep fueling the fire, keep the story going, keep the party moving, as they say. So, yeah, that was, uh, it was, it was fun. The good, it was good production, too. I caught that Jim Moon. It was great production, camera cuts. Yes. They were right on top of everything. So, just a fun time, man. Just a fun time. So, uh, I, I agree. So, yeah, so Rich, Rich Swan takes the win, and we're off to the races, man. We got, uh, we got, uh, you know what we thought was the end. However, Elgin is is taking out, trying to take out Swan, and you know, but Swan's like kind of fighting back, this and that, and <laughs> Swan standing there, kind of standing tall. Johnny Bravo takes him out, takes him out with the, with the X, the big, the exhibition X, takes him out. <laughs> damn, Swan, X. <laughs> damn X, damn X, and I think it's the same X from years back, but he uh, he takes him out. And <laughs> the music hits. We hear, we hear the epic Terminator machine music. Brian Cage, Impact World Champion, in the house returns. Oh, returns, which I thought was great. Clears the ring of Impact and Bravo, and uh, stares down Elgin. Brawl breaks out, but uh, he ends up hitting Elgin with a with a power bomb, which is big. Yes. Now this this has been hurting them. They have not been able to face off. They've not been able to, um, you know, really like be in each other's space and, and and kind of address the same issues. So this was huge for selling the world title match is important. You needed it. You needed yeah. to have a relative. I mean, you needed to have this this hit champion be there. The champion he's, had to be there. He's he's been missing for a couple months. So yeah, it was you you couldn't keep him off TV that long. And yeah, it, it that was important. So yeah, it, it was the main event. If it was a great, longer. it was a great moment to have him back. Yeah, it was good. He got he got his power bomb revenge on Elgin. I thought that was good, and um, he's coming back stronger than ever, guys. Stronger than ever. I can't wait for to see what Brian Cage has uh has in mind. But uh, J Bone, that was it, man. That is the twenty the June twenty first, twenty nineteen edition of Impact Wrestling. So uh, great show! I I really enjoyed it a lot. I thought it was a lot of fun. Oh yeah, it's and that's the great thing about Impact Wrestling lately. And I've said this once; I'll say it a thousand times. Um, you get a little bit of everything. You get some X Division stuff. You get some great stuff from the Knockouts. You get your heavyweights. You get some tag team stuff in there here and there. Um, yeah, it's just 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 such a well rounded show, you know. Yeah. And and there's a couple times, um, you know, I've been critical of how they edit stuff together or what they put together with what, you know, in sequence of the show. Sometimes it's too promo heavy. This was a nice back and forth. You know, this was good. Hmm. Very good. Very, very good. Glad to hear it, Jay Bung. Glad to hear it. Now, before we sign off here, of course not. We have to kick it over. Kyle, are you ready with the Scumbag of the Week? Kyle's going to go ahead and, and nominate. This week's scumbag of the week before we get off the air. So, Kyle, go ahead and take it away with the scumbag of the week. What a scumbag! Well, Trent, with great consideration, you know, I reviewed the entire episode. In fact, I was there in person. I tried so hard to not make this about Ty Valkyrie. La huera loca! What can you do? Scum's gonna scum. That's right, folks. What a scumbag! Ty Valkyrie has to be, has to be, emphasis on has, has to be scumbag of the week once again. What a scumbag! Why might you ask? Because of that stunt she pulled, bringing poor John E. Bravo into the undead realm. And trying to trick Rosemary into helping her out. Now, you know damn well she's not going to fairly give Rosemary that title shot. What a scumbag! Once again, Ty Valkyrie is scumbag of the week for what she did in this episode. And uh, if, if Taya doesn't get it together... La Huera Loca! La Huera Loca, indeed. More like La Huera Scumbag. That scumbag is going to continue to be scumbag of the week. And that's just what it is. Back to you guys. What a scumbag! <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> but uh, well, that's it, Jay Bone, June twenty first, twenty nineteen, in the books from Canada. Uh, go ahead and tell everybody where they can find you, where we can connect with you. Uh, tell the people. Let's, uh, get, let's get Jay Bone connected here. 
I, I run the uh, old YouTube over on Smash This Podcast. You can look that up on the old YouTube. I cover uh, Impact and um, MLW, WoW when it comes back. And uh, I you know review a, a lot of different things. WWE once in a while. Uh, AEW when it comes to TV finally, you know, where the pay-per-view. So I cover a, a, a lot of different things in the world of wrestling and entertainment. Um, you can find me over on the, the Twitter box at, uh, J bone 5150. That's J a Y B O N E 5150. Uh, there's also a, a brand new smash this podcast, uh, Facebook and also on the, uh, Instagram. So all over the place trying to, you know, promote it when I can and just get better at it. But yeah, I'm all over the place. So just uh, look up smash this podcast. Very nice guys. Give J bone a follow connect with him. Tell him how, you, how happy you are to have him on the lounger. Tell him how happy you are. I'm, but, I'm excited. I'm excited to, uh, you know, officially be a part of the family. I've, I've been a part of a few podcast families before. So I, I know the feeling and I know how great that feeling is. And to, to do it again, you know, doing this for about six years now. Um, yep. It's um. Uh, thank you for bringing me in, man. Absolutely, thank you for and thank you, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, Kyle, thank you, scumbag. But uh, cool, man. Very nice, Jay. Well, let me get some of my plugs in here, guys. You can connect with this show on all social media platforms: Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at We Talk Impact. All one word. Type in We Talk Impact or search for Total Nonstop Impact. That is us. Connect. Uh, like like a photo or something. Retweet it. Whatever you do. Connect with us on there, guys. Thank you. But, uh, guys, you can also be sure to find this podcast wherever podcasts are found. Apple, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, Spotify, and YouTube at the Impact Lounge uh, YouTube channel. Also featured on the Total Nonstop Impact YouTube channel. So go ahead and go there. Connect with us everywhere. Send your feedback. We read off. Uh, we read off comments, as you heard earlier. We're pretty receptive to all the comments and feedback, so feel free. Don't hesitate. We love hearing from you guys. So you can also connect with me at Vanilla Joke on Twitter. Go ahead and connect with me there. Type in Vanilla Joke. Connect. You got any questions, let me know. We got a pretty good uh, pretty good, um, uh, you know, conversation that we like to engage with everybody. Say, so, hey, listen, I'm always I'm always up to talking, guys. Feel free. j oh, yeah. I know you are, too. I know you yeah, are, too. I- I, I love I love connecting with my audience. Yeah, yeah, whether it's whether it's through you know DM on social media or in the comments of the video. Yeah, it's it's a great way to uh, you know get their thoughts on what I'm talking about or uh, you know my thoughts on other stuff. And yeah, it's it's great. To, very nice. It is very nice. No, we're, we we love it, guys. So definitely get it, get all this. But don't, also don't forget if you got iTunes, you're an iTunes user, Apple Podcast, get in there, give us a rating, write a review. Let us know what you think of the show. Our iTunes numbers, J-Bone, doing fantastic. We're super proud of it. Awesome. We're to that point, J-Bone. We're in the recommended podcast. Like, if you if you like listening to Total Nonstop Impact on iTunes, it's like, oh, you might like the Chris Jericho show. You might like, you know, this show or that show. And it's like, oh, we've reached this level now. That they're, they're, you know, we're giving the recommendation stuff. So this is good. This is very good stuff. That is tremendous. So the guys keep... Uh, Keep that flow going, that hype going about uh, on iTunes. Also, don't forget, we're featured on Podbean, too. Uh, Podbean and iTunes under the uh, Impact Lounge feed as well. We get that. That's always delivered to you a little bit later. But check that out. That's another place you guys can hear us on the Impact Lounge Podbean. So check, take a look at that. Uh, I think, Jay Bone, I got everything. My own, the show, yours. Oh, let's let's plug Kyle. Kyle, you can follow him on Twitter at KL underscore TNI. He's a scumbag. He's a piece of trash. But I'm going to still give him a plug this week, Jay Bone. But heck? we love him. We love him. We love him. <laughs> He's our scumbag, yeah. damn it. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's true. He's our scumbag. We can't beat that song. All right. Well, Jay Bone, you got anything else? Uh, just want to give a little heads up for the people to watch out for. Um, I had a recent audio stuff with the uh, Wrestle Attic Radio when I was part of their group for uh, Smash This Podcast for my stuff for audio. Um, now, I've started my own recently, but I haven't launched it yet, and I've been looking for something unique to do with it, and I think that Trent and I are going to be putting something together in the near future 
uh, for that. So keep an eye on out for that, and that's uh, classic TNA reviews. Yes. Um, you know when we get time because I know schedules and everything, but uh, that's that's something that uh, he brought up to me last week, and I was like, "Ooh, yeah, that's not a bad idea." And uh, some other people have talked to me about that too as well. So uh, yeah, that's, that's something we might be working on in the near future. So keep an eye out for that for uh, the audio version of Smash This Podcast coming Absolutely. soon. I think, like I said, I I think um, you know we got the Impact Plus. Let's put it to good use. Why the hell not? You know exactly let's, let's do it so sounds good guys all right well thank you guys for joining us we appreciate it thank you kyle in the booth over there and the, hitting the production buttons like yes. you do dang guys give, keep getting feedback let, let us know how you like j-bone being a part of the impact lounge here on on total non-stop impact give us your your thoughts we will be back with you guys after this week's episode of impact wrestling so keep an eye subscribe get notified as soon as we go live on uh, well, not live, but as soon as it goes up online. So check it out, guys. Thank you very much for joining. We will talk to you next week. Say goodbye, j Bump. See you, guys. Peace. Later. It looks like he's going to come back.